Hello everyone, been a while. Welcome back to another painting tutorial video. In this video I am going to show you how to paint Morgast Archive. Here is the list of colors which I'll be using in this video. I will also leave it down in the description below. I have the miniatures full body assembled. I have the lower arms joined together with the halberds separate. I drilled a small hole on the elbow part and with a thin aluminum rod I stuck them onto an old cork. The body and the arms are primed with celestial grey. The head I have it separate. I did the same thing just like with the lower arms by placing it onto an old cork and I primed it with steel legion drap. The armors I left them on the sprues and I did not prime them before. So the first color I'm going to use is Incubi Darkness. This is the base color for the blades of the halberds and for the pommel. Where I want the transition to start, I make thin lines around that part in a sort of a zigzag way. So at the area with the celestial gray and the Incubi Darkness are more or less equally placed. Now I'm going to use Nylac Oxide Technical and I start base painting the Halberts pole and also where the transition is I am going just a little bit over towards the darker area. For this step I am using a medium layer brush. I also use it for the Morgasts on all the skull that can be found on their body and I also base paint the ghostly fog that are on their wings. I give it plenty of time to dry. Now I'm going to make a mix of Collier Green Shade Wash and Lamium Medium, a 1 to 3 part ratio. I want the green shade to be more diluted so it will slowly and nicely give a better contrast of green to the parts. I am using a medium shade brush and I add the first layer wash onto the whole surface of the previously painted ghostly areas including the Incubi Darkness blades as well. I add also to the body and the fog. At this stage it's hard to be very precise so it is not a problem if the wash goes onto the bone areas because later once the ghostly effect is done, I will repaint the bones. Once the first layer is completely dry, I am adding a second wash with the same mix onto the halberd's blades where the transition is to slowly blend the two colors even smoother. After the second wash I am adding a third and final wash onto the transition area. Now I'm going to use only Collier Green Shade. I use a small layer brush and just adding the wash into the eye sockets of each skull just to have it more darker. I 
I am going to use now the base color which is celestial gray and with a large dry brush I start dry brushing the raised surface of the halberd's pole. I leave the transition area as it is for now focusing only on the pole. I also use it on the body and the mist. And with Utho and Grey, I am using again a large dry brush and I dry brush again the whole ghostly effect and fog but being more gentle because I just want the sharpest details to be highlighted with this color. Now I'm going to leave it aside and I'm focusing on the ancient bone. I am using Steel Legion Drab as a base color. I painted it off camera, but you get the idea. Paint every single bone with this color, including the lower arms. Now I'm going to use Morgast Bone and with a small dry brush I start dry brushing the bone being neat and trying not to go over on the previously painted areas I take my time and carefully go over on all the bone details Once it's done, I am going to add a wash. I am using Agrax Earthshade. I use a medium shade brush on the larger areas. I also add this onto the fleshy parts of the wings. And I switch to a medium layer brush for the small bone structures and being very neat and careful, especially the ghostly skulls, not to go over with the wash. I like to make the wash go into the recesses, however, just a small amount, not to darken down the already brightened ghostly effect. Once the wash is completely dry, I am going to use again Morgus Bone. First, I am going to use a large dry brush and I go over on all the bone details with a gentle movement to get all the raised details brightened up.
After the dry brushing, I am going to layer and edge highlight the raised sharpest details with the same Morgus Bone color. It really helps making stronger contrast for the bone and a better transition from the darker to brighter color. And finally I use some water blending as well with still the same color. I dilute the paint with two free parts of water so the consistency is sort of a wash and I am still adding it to the flatter parts of the bones. I start adding it from the edges where it is already bright but during the dry brushing or layering these parts were left out which are a lot especially on the miniature with like at least 95% is made out of bone. I wait for the first layer to dry which is going to be quite transparent at first and I add a second layer slowly building up an even color on the flatter parts to have a smooth transition and a better lighting effect on them. Now I can start highlighting the bones and also base paint the teeth. I am going to use the color Wave Bone and I am using a small layer brush for this. In some small parts such as the nostrils I am also layering it but just a very little amount and also knowing that the helmet is going to cover most of the parts of the head I only focus on those areas only which are going to be visible. On the arms and also on the body there are some very small holes which I also etch highlight to make them more visible about the presence of an ancient bone style. And yeah, I know it's all about to get very thin line on literally all the sharpest features of the bones which will be giving an amazing sharp contrast to the bones. However. It is a long long progress and it is truly a game of patience but in the end the result is speaking of itself.
Now I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia Wash and with a small airbrush I add it onto the teeth. Once the wash is dry, I am going to layer the teeth with Screaming Skull just to give a bit of different color variation. Now that I'm finally done with the bones, I am making a mix of Biotan Green and Lamium Medium, a 1 to 8 part ratio, so it is more like a glaze than a wash. And I am adding this glaze onto the chest and the mist, a quite generous amount, and also just a hint onto the areas where the spiritual form is meeting with the actual bones to get a sort of glowing effect and to blend even more the two different parts together, especially I am going over on the wings so that the transformation is more visible. I also add this glaze onto the handle of the weapons all the way towards the darker areas so it is blending together smoothly. For the fingertips on the arms and feet, I am going to base paint them with Ashen Grey. I use a small layer brush and just taking my time. Now I'm going to darken down a bit the claws by using Noon Oil Wash. Again I use a small layer brush, especially on the fingertips I am trying to add not further than the deepest recesses, not to darken the already painted Halbred's spiritual pole area. After the wash is completely dry, I am using Mechanica Standard Grey. I use a small layer brush and I start to add a thin layer onto the top raised surface where the light could hit those areas and also edge highlight these parts. On the darker areas I only do an edge highlight. Now I'm going to use Dawnstone and with a small layer brush I do an edge highlight on the sharpest features of the claws and fingertips.
I can now focus on the next area, which are the Halberts Energy Blazing. First, I'm going to use Kabbalite Green. I use a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting from the transition towards the Incubi Darkness base painted blades. Let's not forget also the pommel. After that I'm going to use Cyberite Green and this time I do an even finer edge highlight onto the sharpest features of the blade. I also go with this color a little bit more further down towards the transition area to blend it even more smoother. And finishing it with Gauss Blaster Green, I am adding it onto the sharpest corners so all those small meeting points are getting more contrast and visibility. Now that the halberds are done, I am moving on to the Ebon Rot armor. I base painted them with Tumbul Brown and I dry brush the armors with Lead Belcher with a small dry brush. I am using my usual triggering technique which can be intimidating to some hobby painters but at least with this technique I don't need to be worried if the metal paint goes onto the already painted areas and ruin it. I am going to use now Druki Violet wash and I apply it onto the metal partners. Once it's dry, I am using Vallejo Dark Rust wash and with a small layer brush, I am applying it into the deepest recesses of the armor plates to give it a bit more weathered, aged look. I am using my finger to remove all the excess paint from the armor, however, the tissue works too. Now I'm going back to use again Lead Belcher and with a small layer brush I start edge highlighting all the flat and sharp features of the armor. In some random areas I am making very thin lines downwards for some chipping or scratched effect on the armor. And with Stormos Silver, I pick out all the pins and where the scratch marks meeting with the corner parts of the armor, I add a very little amount as edge highlight just to have more contrast on those areas. Now I'm going to use Mechanic Standard Grey for the rims of the armor plates. I use a medium layer brush and I start base painting those areas. Bear in mind on the chest pieces the top parts are actually the color bones of the models which at this moment I wasn't 
aware of it and I also base painted them with this color but it is not necessary. I am adding now Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the Mechanical Standard Grey base painted areas. Once the wash is completely dry, I am using Dawnstone. I use a small layer brush and I start layering the grey rims on the small little details. I edge highlight them. There are some tiny little holes which can be also edge highlighted with it. And as you may have realized, I also painted the colored bones and the rib cage with the right color scheme. And finishing the grey armor rims with Admin Stratum Grey, I use a small layer brush and I edge highlight all the sharpest little features that can be found on the armor. Now I'm going to use Balthazar Gold and I base paint the emblems on the shoulder pads. I want to give it a bit more aged look on the gold areas, so for that I am going to add Colia Green Shade Wash onto the gold. I decided to add black inside of the emblems so that the skulls can be more visible. I diluted Abaddon black with water, 1 to 2 part ratio, and with a small layer brush I let the paint flow inside into the deeper space between the gold rims and the skulls. And with Retributor armor, I edge highlight all the gold details. I am using again Abaddon Black, but this time for the gems. At this stage, I also assembled the helmets so the gems on the helmet can be painted much easier. I am going to use Mechanical Standard Grey 
and with an extra small artificer brush or any other small brush, I start edge highlighting the edges of the gem. With Administratum Grey, I do the same edge highlighting, but mainly only on the top center right part of the gems. And with white scar, I add a dot onto the center point and also on the top right corner. And I seal the gems with shining cover using art coat. Now I can focus on the eyes and the wings. For the eyes, I am going to use white scar as a base color. Now I'm gonna wash the eyes with some Bieltan Green mixed with Lamia Medium, a 1 to 2 part ratio. I let this wash flow inside and also just a touch outwards on the skull, just to give that glowing effect. Moving on to the wings, I am using Kerber Crimson Wash and I apply it onto the skin parts of the wings which were left previously with the base color and an Agrax Earthshade wash. Once the wash is completely dry, I am going to use Bugman's Glow and with a small layer brush I start edge highlighting the sharpest features of the rotten old skin of the wings. and the models are now fully painted, it is time to assemble them and base them. I base my models in the same way just as my other Osier Bone Reapers units, Heroes, which you can watch on my channel if you are interested. And as a final touch, I am adding some Nylike Oxide onto the meeting point where the base and the spiritual wave or smoke meets. Also, let's not forget to paint the rims in black. And here are the finished Morgast Archai, the bodyguards for Nagash and for his closest lieutenants to command them and bring death to all who oppose the mighty Nagash.
Thank you so much for watching this tutorial video. If you found it useful or helpful, do hit the like button. Also, if you want to see more videos like these, do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button if you wish to be notified about future video tutorial contents. Special thanks to my Patreon, who are helping the channel out by supporting it on Patreon. That's all for now. See you all in the next one. Cheers.